Hello, Kids Church. It's June and April, and welcome to Kids Church Online. Hello, guys. We're playing What's in the Box today. How to play this game is we're going to try to figure out what's in the box with just touching it and not seeing it. And the person who gets the most point wins. And the... What? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the game. Go. Okay, go. A phone, a phone, a phone, a phone. <laughs> Good job, time. guys. Okay, next object. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes, guys. Okay. There you go. Can you go? Yeah, go. Oh, a hand sanitizer. No. Where is it? <laughs> He's holding it. There we go. It's uh, a candy wrapper or something. Sort of. It's, it's, it's those It's, it's a cleaning fruit. wipe. It's a cleaning. No, it's not clean. It's that fruit. Fruit. Fruit thingy! Yeah! <laughs> we'll give it to you, it's fruit to go! Flat, fruit flat to go. jelly, flat. Yes, yeah, so we'll give it to you. How is this fruit to go? Yeah, well, you can pull it out and look at it. It's fruit to go. It is? Yeah, it's fruit you to can go. Pull your hand out. <laughs> Whip it. Okay. Close your eyes. Okay, go. Oh! oh. <laughs> Oh, it's a wet sponge. It's a wet sponge. Oh, yeah. I got it first. I think I it's June got it first. April has one point and June has two points. Okay, guys, next Close item. Your Close your eyes so I can show her. Okay, go. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I haven't even put it in. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, uh, temperature thingy. No, no, no. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, 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 Let go of it. Let me touch it. It's a. It's, it's a, the cleaning thing. The one you dishwash it's it. It's for the. the straw for, straw cleaner. The yeah, dishwasher. straw cleaner. Oh come on. Okay, April has two points. June has um two points. Okay, okay. this is the last one. Then. Last thing. Tiebreaker. Okay. Close your eyes. Okay. Oh. Yep. Uh, it's it's a cube. <laughs> You're gonna have to be more specific than that. Uh, uh, it's made of wood. <laughs> Not really. It's the power charger thing. Yes! What? Yes! No way! <laughs> April wins with three How? points and June has two points. Thanks for playing with us. Maybe try it at home, guys. It's really fun. Play with your siblings. Bye! Bye! Preteen Zoom calls are on Sunday at 5 p.m. If you need the Zoom information, please contact Caitlin at family at rpcchart.ca. Current Zoom call is January 20th at 5 p.m. On February 15th, we will be posting a family photo scavenger hand, so keep a look out for the information. Winners get a free pizza dinner for the family. Today's big point is, ever since creation, God has been working to tell his story to the world and to invite every person to love and know him. Before the mountains were born, and before you created the earth and the world, you are God. You have always been, and you always will be. Psalms 90 verse 2. Thank you.
guys, so this month we are going through the books of the law, also known as the Pentateuch. These are the first five books of the Old Testament, popularly referred to as the Book of Moses. They are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Hi boys and girls, my name is Marion Gordon, and I'm going to be reading you your Bible story today. It's from the Book of Genesis. It's the story of creation. Did you know that a long, long time ago, there was nothing? No trees, no people, no buildings, not even a sound or a smell. Darkness was everywhere. That is what it was like before God decided to make our world. God created our whole world in six days. He made something different on each of the six days, and then on the seventh day, God was finished and he rested. But first, let's go back to the beginning. Let's look at the very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. The earth was empty and had no form. Darkness covered the ocean, and God's spirit was moving over the water. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. So he divided the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. This was the first day. So God simply spoke and the light appeared. And this is not just sunlight. After all, the sun hadn't even been created yet. Can you make light by saying, let there be light? No, but God can. Then God said, let there be something to divide the water in two. So God made the air to divide the water in two. Some of the water was above the air and some of the water was below it. God named the air sky. Evening passed and morning came. And this was the second day. Water was everywhere. On the second day of creation, God, cre God separated the water from the earth and the water on the earth, placing the sky between the two. For the first time ever, the earth would have experienced an atmosphere and things like clouds, winds, waves, and evaporation. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered together and the dry land appear. And it happened. God named the dry land earth. He named the water that was gathered together seas. God saw that this was very good. Then God said, let the earth produce plants. Some plants will make grain for seeds. Others will make fruit with seeds in it and every seed will produce more of its own kind of plant. And it happened. The earth produced plants. Some plants had grain for seeds. The trees made fruit with seeds in it, and each seed grew into its own kind of plant. God saw that, that this was good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the third day. Now there were mountains, valleys, boulders, springs, rivers, waterfalls, caves, beaches, gravel, clay, and sand. And because there were plants, the earth for the first time contained roots and stems, leaves, grass, pollen, bark, vines, and fruit, vegetables, flowers, and more. So God made the two large lights. He made the brighter light to rule the day. He made the smaller light to rule the night. He also made the stars. God put all these things in the sky to shine on the earth. They are to rule over the day and over the night. He put them there to separate the light from the darkness. God saw that all these things were good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the fourth day. With the sun came light, heat, warmth, UV rays, sunrises, sunsets, dawn, dusk, and even eclipses. God knew that the earth would need the sun to survive. And then there was the beauty of the night for the very first time. Sometimes the moon is full and round. Sometimes it's shaped like a crescent. When the moon appears very thin, some people even call it a toenail moon. Of course, the stars are amazing because they are bright and sparkly and even appear to twinkle in the sky. Then God said, let the water be filled with living things and let birds fly in the air above the earth. So God created the large sea animals. 
He created every living thing that moves in the sea. The sea is filled with these living things. Each one produces more of its own kind. God also made every bird that flies, and each bird produces more of its own kind. God saw that this was good. God blessed them and said, have many young ones and grow in numbers. Fill the water of the seas and let the birds grow in number on the earth. Evening passed and morning came, and this was the fifth day. In the sea, there are fish, swimming mammals, such as whales and dolphins, as well as sponges, jellyfish, clams, oysters, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, starfish, sea lilies, lobsters, worms, snails, and many more. And on this day, God created all sorts of birds to fill the skies. When God created birds, he created feathers, beaks, wings, and claws. Then on the sixth day, God said, let the earth be filled with animals and let each produce more of its own kind. Let there be tame animals and small crawling animals and wild animals, and let each produce more of its kind, and it happened. So God made the wild animals, the tame animals, and all the small crawling animals to produce more of their own kind. God saw that this was good. Think of all the animals that live on the ground, wild, tame, animals, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and even some birds that don't fly. God is amazing because every single kind of animal was his idea and his creation. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness and let them rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the tame animals, over all the earth, and over all the small crawling animals of the earth. Then the Lord took dust from the ground and formed man from it. The Lord breathed the breath of life into the man's nose and the man became a living person. On the same day God made the animals, he made a man. The man was called Adam. Adam was different from the animals because when God breathed life into Adam, God gave him a soul. Adam's soul gave him the ability to think, love, and worship. Adam could make choices. Adam could talk to God. Adam was a special creation. God brought all of the animals before Adam and gave him the honor of naming them. But Adam knew that he was different from the animals. God did not want Adam to be lonely. So the Lord God caused the man to sleep very deeply. And while the man was asleep, God took one of his ribs from the man's body. Then God closed the man's skin at the place where he took the rib. The Lord God used the rib from the man to make a woman. Then the Lord brought the woman to the man. Adam was so happy when he woke up and he saw the woman. Now he was not alone. He called the woman Eve. The creation of mankind was now complete. Adam and Eve were beautiful and pure. They experienced no shame or need to cover up with clothes. So the sky, the earth, and all that filled them were finished. By the seventh day, God finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from the work. God blessed the seventh day and made it a holy day. He made it holy because on that day he rested. He rested from all the work he had done in creating the world. God was not resting because he was tired. He rested because he was finished with some important work. He was satisfied that he had done a very good job and God had told Adam and Eve that they had a job to do as well. They were told to take care of the garden. How about you? How do you take care of the beautiful earth that God made? We start off life perfectly connected to God. Our relationship with God is perfect and nothing is in the way. But the problem is, we do bad things. We sin. We tell a lie. We take something that isn't ours. We hit someone. Or we go where we aren't supposed to go. And this causes us to break our relationship with God. Because we are no longer connected to God, we are separated from Him and are on our way to hell when we die. We can no longer go to heaven because we have done what we aren't supposed to do. We try to fix it, but our relationship 
is still broken. But God offers us a way to fix it. If we ask Jesus to forgive us of the bad stuff we've done and ask him to come into our hearts, our relationship with God can be fixed. We now have access to God and a way to get to heaven because Jesus takes the sin out of our lives. Point number one. Have you ever stopped to notice the beauty of art, like a painting or a sculpture or how good a song sounds? Now, have you ever thought about doing that but in nature? Like the big beautiful forest, the big majestic mountains or the depths of the ocean. When you go on a hike or you go camping with your family and you take that extra time to notice just how amazing hills and valleys can be. Behind all of that is art. And the greatest artist, of course, is God. In the book of Genesis, he talks about how all creation is good. And it's for him and to praise and glorify the Lord. So whenever you're out and about from the busyness of the city to the quietness of the prairie, Take some time, enjoy the creation, and remember to thank God for all of that because everything that he creates, including you and me, is good. Point number two, how did sin come into the world? To understand this, we're gonna be looking at Genesis 2 verses 15. And it says, the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. So, right after God had told Adam this, he created Eve. And Eve was tempted by the serpent, which is Satan. And Satan deceived God's creation. So, God told Adam and Eve not to eat the fruit. Eve was tempted and she disobeyed God by eating the forbidden fruit right after God told them not to. And then she convinced Adam to take a bite as well. And so Satan had deceived them and sin had fallen into the world when humans disobeyed what God had told them. So have you ever disobeyed your parents? Maybe they told you not to do something. Maybe they told you not to eat the cookie from the jar, but you decided to take the cookie and eat it. So that is what happened to Adam and Eve. They had disobeyed um, God. So boys and girls, this is why we need to obey God. Not only it makes him happy when we obey him, but this is why Adam and Eve had fallen into sin because he disobeyed God. So that is how sin has fallen into the world. Hey guys, so we just talked about creation with Justin and sin with Susan. So what's next? Well, we're actually going to talk about that now. So before sin, Adam and Eve had a really close relationship with God. It was super awesome. But when sin came, there was like, a, like there was a barrier. So they couldn't have that relationship anymore. So what was God going to do? Was he just going to snap his fingers and get rid of all the humans? Or was he going to do something about it? Well, God chose to do something about it because he has a plan. He always has a plan. So in the Old Testament, what we see is we see talk about this character. His name, he's a Messiah. That's what it's called. In the Old Testament, they don't know who that is. They just know that God has a plan to send a Messiah that he's going to, you know, help the world, like take care of their sins and get rid of the sins and restore that relationship back with God. But they don't really know who that is. They just know that he's coming. They have to go on faith that he's coming. But in the New Testament, what we see is we meet this man named Jesus. And Jesus is the son of God, but he's also the Messiah. He's come to save um, save the world from their sins. We're going to learn more about that in Easter. But that is what God's plan is, to get rid of sin in the world and restore that relationship. We're going to learn more about what Jesus does for us um, in the coming months in for about Easter. But that is God's. that is what God's going to do. It's that... The key about this is that God has a plan. He's not just going to let us sit and suffer and let us, you know, never have that close relationship again because he loves us. He wants us to be close with us. So God always has a plan. Question number one, what existed before creation? Question number two, what did God create?
Question number three. How did God create the world? Question number four. How was God's creation of man and woman different from his creation of everything else? Anything else? Question number five. What happened when Adam and Eve disobeyed God? Question number six, what did God do so we can be in a relationship with him? Hey guys, so I hope you took some time and answered those questions with your parents and I hope you have been enjoying our service. But like we said, this month we are going through the book of the law, which is also known as the Pentateuch. But this week we have chosen to go through the book of creation to fall. That's from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 3. So if you have time this week, take some time and read it with your parents. It's actually really good. You'll learn so much. But like our big point today, it says... Ever since creation, God has been working to tell his big story to the world and to invite every person to know him and to love him. Boys and girls, God loves you. And like we read in the scripture verse today, that everything he created, it was good. So boys and girls, he took time to create you and it was good. But unfortunately, because of Adam and Eve's sin and sin came into the world. And what, and what, before I go into that, when you may wonder, Pastor Crystal, what is sin? Well, sin is anything we think, anything we say, or anything that we do that displeases God. So boys and girls, I want you to take some time to reflect on yourself. Have you thought or done or say it's anything to please, displease God? But when sin entered this world from Adam and Eve, God gave us a choice to choose whether we want to serve him or to serve the world. Boys and girls, we want to give you an opportunity today to, to choose the right way, which is God's way. And we want you to remember that even in everything, God is always there. And like in the very verse today from Psalm 90, verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were born and before you created the earth and the world, you were God. You have always been and you will always be. Boys and girls, God is always with us. God loves you. Even though as we go through this time, boys and girls, God is with you. And he said in the scripture, he will never leave you nor forsake you. So today, we would like you to take an opportunity to think about your life. Think about where you are and what are you doing to make God happy? Or are you living a life that's not pleasing to God or not? You're making decisions that are not wise. Boys and girls, Jesus loves us and he has given us free will to choose him. But it's your choice. And today, we want to give you the chance to choose him. So why don't we find, why don't you find your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa, whoever is around, hold their hand and let us pray together. Let's believe that God is going to use you. That let's believe that that sin or whatever is going through your mind or your thought or your heart will be gone in the name of Jesus because we believe in a God that's alive. Are you ready to give Jesus all? Because I am. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for being God and thank you for being in control. Father, forgive me for my thoughts. Forgive me for the things I say. Forgive me, O oh God, for the things that I do that's displeasing you. And Father, from today, O oh God, this Sunday morning, I just pray that you would forgive me, O oh God, and that I live a life after you. Because Father God, I know that you have a great plan and purpose for my life and for you. every child that's looking at this, this right now, O oh God. So, Father, we surrender this day into your hands. We surrender our lives, and we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, we are excited to teach you so much about the Bible, and we're excited to help to, for you to understand more. If you have any questions and you've prayed this prayer, we would love to hear from you. So feel free to email me at crystal at rpcchurch.ca. We would love to know that you give your, your heart to Jesus. And if you want a Bible and when you want you want to read more of this and understand it more, let us know because we want to help you grow in the love of Jesus. Have a great day, you guys. See you next week.